So it's Sunday evening once again, and that only means one thing. Scorecard is live on your screens. And as you can see, uh, some of us are winners. You know, we've won a uh, title as far as the German Bundesliga is concerned. Shout-outs to uh, Timothy Fosumensa, uh, part of the Bundesliga title winning squad. Some people are stuck in an eternal rut of trying to rebuild their team ever since their GOAT manager retired. Others have American money but are also stuck in a quagmire. They say they are onto a project. I don't know what that's all about. But what I can tell you is some of us are winners. We've won our Bundesliga title, and it's unbeating as well. Today, we absolutely run route. Uh, you can text into the show. The text and what supplies will be on your screens. Uh, text us from wherever you are across the continent, Uganda, South Africa, uh, Nigeria. My Nigerian friends haven't uh, shown up on the show for a minute. Uh, Sierra Leone, Togo, everywhere you are, let us hear from you. And as far as Ghana is concerned, please do uh, send in your messages from around uh, the country. We'll take a quick turn around. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest for today, and then we'll get to the show. Go. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let me say a wonderful evening to Alejandro Garnacho and <laughs> Yeah, I'm Jeremy Tide, Andrew Kakovic. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. It's good to be here. But <laughs> you are a bit too late to the party, yeah? Honestly. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's all good. Um, for all those who are watching, like I said, this is a Bayer Leverkusen jersey, just in case you don't know. We won the title. This is a signed jersey <laughs> from Timothy for So, yeah. hey, um, we, we are on the winning side. In Spain, things are happening for us as well. Uh, let, me, let me talk to yeah, and Edwin real quick. What's caught your eye as far as the weekend of sports is concerned? A lot yeah. has happened, actually. Mm -hmm. Some we might not discuss on the show. For me, it's been NBA playoffs, yeah. um, especially um, watching Luka Doncic and Kyrie Evan do their thing. And then there was some boxing this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Vasil Lomachenko, Lomachenko yeah. back in action. Uh, that was my toast of the weekend. Ada Goulet getting a goal off the bench again for Real Madrid. I'm yeah. keeping an eye on that young man. I don't know what you guys have been after. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I watched the uh, bits and pieces of the Lomachenko fight. Um, I, I, I honestly um, believe that it was going to be one-sided, and mm -hmm. it was one-sided. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, uh, George Cambosos, he was overmatched. He was never going, ever going to um, trouble Vasily Lomachenko, who is a master technician. Yeah. Uh, it, still beats, it still beats me, my imagination, how... Um, George Cambosos ended up beating Teofimo Lopez to uh, end up w uh, winning all those um, light uh, mm -hmm. lightweight um, mm -hmm. championship belts. And it was just one of those days where it just happened. And ever since, um, he's gone up against the elites of the elite, and mm -hmm. he, he, he's <coughs> not been able to um, stand in front of them, those guys, and even score major points. Um, mm. he, he fought against Devin Haney twice, and in both, in both fights, he got Lost dominated. Well, yep. And last night, he got dominated as well by... Um, Lomachenko. And yes, one uh, thing that also caught my eye this weekend, it has to be the Man United game um, against Arsenal. And that utterly terrible performance from mm -hmm. Garnacho. It was beyond terrible. Yeah. There are a lot of words I want to say, uh, I want to use, but I can't <laughs> use them on this platform uh, because it doesn't, uh, yeah. ethics does not allow me to do so. So I have to bite my tongue on that one. That's but honestly, mm -hmm. it was unproductive, uninspiring, um, underwhelming, unintelligent, oh. <laughs> and flat out annoying. And flat out annoying. Oh, that performance bro. was beyond. This is you being diplomatic. Yeah, I can yeah imagine, that performance. I can imagine the things you don't want that, to say. That performance was utterly terrible, honestly. Mm. Poor, poor, poor performance. Edwin, what's been going on with you? Look, um, as you said, NBA has been fascinating yeah. to watch. The yeah. matchup between SGA and Kyrie and Doncic, yep. it's been really good. Some fascinating basketball. Yep. I yep. mean, I, I am a Curry person. I like the Warriors. Seeing them go out was not uh, too good for me, but yeah. the teams that are left in the playoffs, really good teams, and any one of them that wins, it's deserved mm. winners. Mm. Well, the teams left in the playoffs for me sort of signify what I would call a change of the mantle or a change of the guard in the NBA. You see Lillard, Curry, Giannis, LeBron, all those guys are out of the playoffs. And who is in the playoffs? <laughs> Luca. Tatum, um, Tyrese Halliburton, yeah. Ant Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. It's, 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 it's been yeah. that kind of uh, postseason, really. So I'm enjoying it. Today, there's a game between the Timberwolves 
and the Nuggets. It's game four, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that, that should be a good one. After this show, I'm definitely going to be seated to be watching that. But let's get uh, into today's show. Enough of the chit-chat. Let's get into the MTN FA Cup semifinals. And let's get to the games that happened. In Swatraman, we're up against Legon Cities. Uh, in the end, in Swatraman, led by Maxwell Konodu, were too good for Legon Cities. We'll check out that game also between Bofa Quatano and Dreams FC, who are the defending champions. Now, Dreams FC have been dumped out of the competition. So, in Swatraman Football Club, led by Maxwell Konedu and Bofa Quatano, are through to the final of the MTN FA Cup. Now, guess what they have in common? Both teams coming from the middle belt yeah. that we have. Uh, I think the middle belt might be the most talented football talent or talent generation region in the country. Yeah. The North might probably beg to differ because they not have their fair share yeah. of talent as far as we are concerned. But let me start with you, Edwin. Um, big results for the two teams, uh, in Swatraman especially. Uh, they've spent big this season. They've done pretty well in the league. Uh, they've made it to an FA Cup final. Well, wait, did this result surprise you? Um, yes, it did. Mm. Um, but not entirely because in Swatraman have been pretty good so yeah. far in the Ghana Premier League season. They've fallen off a bit. Uh, as summer techs have taken over, but there's no denying the quality that they have. And mm -hmm. under a manager like um, Max Okunedu, Okunedu yeah. they are always going to be a threat. And the goal by Abdul Rahman was fantastic. The way he controlled it, took it over the yep. player and finished. Yep. Brilliant. So it's up to them now to go into the final. They're going to the final probably as favorites to win mm -hmm. it now. Mm -hmm. And being favorites, it comes with its own pressure. You go in, everyone expects you to win, everyone yeah. expects you to qualify to Africa, and then it gets to your players' heads, and suddenly they lose focus, and they end up losing the final. Mm. It's going to be important for not just the club, but the manager as well. He's won the Premier League, yep. but he's never actually won the FA Cup as a head coach. Yep. So this will mean a lot to him as and well. And I'm sure he wants to test his skills on the African stage as well. He would, and I'm sure he would be suited to it as a manager, with the players, of, obviously, we'll start talking about recruitment. He's had good exposure with the it. Black Stars as with an assistant Stars. traveling the continent. Exactly, and with Kotoko as well. So yeah. it shouldn't be too new to him. So it's important if they make it to Africa mm -hmm. for the recruitments to come. But after reaching this stage of the competition, you expect to see recruitments regardless. He's mm. done enough to show that if you give him a few more players quality players yeah. who definitely do well, not just in the tournament, but also in the league as well. In the other game, yeah. Dreams FC, that's the result that surprised me. I thought they were going to end up back in, in, in Africa mm -hmm. because they are certainly one of the most high-profile Ghanaian teams at yep. the moment. You'd have expected them to reach yeah. uh, that, that was a shock. Is, the is it final a case, Is it least. a case of them having played too many matches? Is it fatigue, travel? Uh, those, they've, had, they've had a very... How they call it? Involving hectic, season. Hectic. Yeah. Very hectic. Yeah. But it's also been stop starts. They've not had too much, too many games in the league. Mm -hmm. Still have a few outstanding games. The playing in the Africa, coming back home. It's not easy on any team. It stretches yep. your squad, uh, no matter which team you are. But yep. you have to give credit to Bofa Katano. The celebrations after the game, you could tell how much so they are a traditional club, like yes, proper traditional proper club. Traditional club. Yep. So it's good to see them back, good to see them uh, into the final. Mm. It's going to be an interesting final, not yeah. one that you can easily call. But as I said, in Swatraman will definitely start as favorites. Dreams will be very disappointed. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think um, it's a good final that we have. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good final that mm -hmm. we have. and. It will live up to the hype. I'm um, having these two teams um, set to go up against each other. Yeah. I, I like it. I think um, we, I think this is the the kind of final that outside of the big, 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 big traditional mm -hmm. clubs, mm -hmm. I think this is the final that really fits the MTN FA Cup. It does. I we I mean, we should expect a huge turnout um, in, for that final match because that game is at the Legon Stadium. Yeah, because once you have um, in Swatraman and Wafa Kwatano coming um, face to face mm -hmm. and facing off each other, I think, yes, you have a very, very sizable crowd turning up um, at the final. And it will make for a very good uh, backdrop for, for that particular game. But um, one thing I would like to touch on um, has to do with that penalty call. Yes, it's a bit uh, controversial, it's a bit dicey, but mm -hmm. we don't have VR in our system um, because it's very expensive and we have financial issues, granted. But you have um, TVs, you yeah. have all these um, replays. Yeah. 
You can set and, up and a local, a, a localized VAR. Yeah, at the center. You can, you can, you, before the game, you that, can that, have that an makes agreement. Some sense to me. You can it, have an agreement. It makes sense, but you can have an agreement. With will it the, be in compliance? Exactly. With the, with that's the, the, with the, no, the but the point is, do you want something like this controversy brewing every time? Because let's say had Bofakwatano not um, be, uh, gone ahead to win this particular yeah. matchup, it would have brought about a whole lot of issues and. Yep. I, I, there was this clip of um, the Bofakwatano bench mm -hmm. after that penalty was given. Yep. And the, some of the words that they, 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 they used, they were they're pretty much unprintable. And they were pointing in the direction of um, Kretekweku and his alleged involvement in um, the, the, the manufacturing sort of, of games. Sort and of heavy-handedness some, because some he's of those thought, be, yeah. some, some of that side. And, and it makes it very um, difficult to, to really... Um, deal with these issues. You can you can make um, a situation where you find the middle ground. You find a middle ground. You don't have the money for VR, mm -hmm. but you can find middle ground by ensuring that there's an agreement uh, with the teams that if there's a very controversial situation, mm -hmm. if it pops up, yes, we can just check out for the replays on uh, at the pitch side to, just to ensure that there is parity, just to ensure that there is fairness and the game can continue without any controversy. But well, all in all, I think we have a good matchup um, in the final. A good matchup indeed. Like I said, that game uh, is at the Legon Stadium. So those of you in Accra, I'm sure you can go all the way to Legon Stadium. It hosted the uh, football for the African games, hosted some of the games. So uh, it's a good ground uh, to go watch. Like I said, do uh, send us your thoughts via text and WhatsApp. The uh, WhatsApp numbers will be displayed on your screen, so you can send us uh, your thoughts there. Uh, Legon City's dumped out. Uh, James FC also dumped out of the MTN uh, FA Cup. We have a good final uh, on our hands. The last time I remember VAR uh, anywhere between Ghana. I remember it was the Ghana-Nigeria game Ghana -Nigeria, where yeah. it was used for the World Cup qualifier, yeah. and the Nigerians basically um, did away with the <laughs> VAR setup after <laughs> the game. Somebody you? took the TV away. Yeah. Somebody took the... the it was just crazy. <laughs> That's just what it was as far as VR is concerned. Let's move it on and get you to some other highlights. Let's get to the Premier League uh, this time around. Some really good games. The Premier League is gradually wrapping up. We have just about one more game week to go. It's crazy because the league just started yesterday. I'm not sure where all the time uh, actually went. Tottenham Hotspur were up against Burnley. It was a game where Burnley needed um, a win or any kind of result to at least keep their hopes alive going into final day. They did take the lead, give their fans some false hope, and then the roof caved in on their head. So Tottenham Hotspur digging deep to get a result in this game. The big story here, though, is that Burnley and Vincent Company have been relegated to the championship. They were the winners of the championship, uh, came into the Premier League with really good form, but uh, in the end, they could not stay up. They could not stay up, uh, primarily because they refused to change. And when they did change, it came too late for it to make a difference. Yeah. I think throughout the season, Vincent Company has stuck to his ways. Idealism I, over pragmatism. Exactly. Being an attacking team, trying to play out from the mm -hmm. back. And ultimately, that's what's cost them. They're trying to play out of, of the back, even though they know there are teams, better teams in the Premier League, yeah. players who will press really hard, players who will win the ball and take advantage of those opportunities. And throughout the game, even in this one that they lost against Spurs, we saw it again. Try to play out of the back. Yeah. Uh, one player loses the ball. Spurs have a chance to score. Hmm. Unfortunately for Burnley, Spurs missed quite a number of those chances. They did. But it happened constantly. Every single game of the season, you find moments like this scattered throughout their games. And when you concede goals like this, mm -hmm. obviously it's going to make your job even harder because you know you, now you need to score. And Burnley do not have the attacking threat nope. to get more goals than a lot of teams in the Premier League. The moment they lost Colliosho to injury, I think that's where I lost hope for them. Because he was their yeah. best attacking that player. That's what Fofana gave them a bit of a spark yeah. mm -hmm. when he came through. But even him, even him had his moments yeah. where he missed some he good wasteful. chances. He I, wasn't I, getting I opportunities. Think the, aside company, right? Mm. I feel like the biggest corporate in this mix is Murich. He went, he went on this run where it was almost like he was trying to get his team relegated like <laughs> it was like four weeks on a run where he was either passing the ball to the opponent's defender he was spilling easy balls i don't know what it's funny going. that you mentioned this because in a game against space he did that three times three different times where he was giving the ball to pass it out from the back yeah. and kicked it straight to a Spurs player. Crazy. He ended up being recycled and 
I, as I said, fortunately for them, Spurs didn't score from there. Yeah. But the other opportunities came where Spurs didn't score from. And I think that the relegation is well deserved. However, one thing I do like about this is yeah. that they did not press the panic button. They kept mm. stuck with Van Sant company. Yep. Yep. They actually have a good side that might make it straight back, back to into it. the Premier League. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be difficult because mm. you have teams that were relegated last season who Going are still back. in there and who look strong in the championship. And now Good you have point. the three teams that Good came point. into the uh, premiership going back. So it's going to be a really tough test for them. But I do trust Van Zandt Company to get them back. Tough test for them. Yeah, I, I don't know how you feel about I'm sure you want to touch on company too, but yeah. touch on Spurs first of all. How do you feel about the kind of campaign they've had? So Ange started really well on beating run. Um, they had a couple of injuries and then the season uh, tilled a little. It looks like, I wouldn't necessarily say they are finishing strong, but will you, will you call this a successful season? Um, for consistency's sake, I'll say no. And I'll say they choked and did a Spurs, what Spurs does all the time. Uh, a Spursy thing, more or less. Because I, I'm, on, I'm on the record to have said that, mm -hmm. um, yes, Ghana at the 2022 World Cup, uh, missed a golden opportunity yeah. um, to qualify to the next round um, because it was there for the taking. Despite the fact that we were overwhelming um, underdogs mm -hmm. going into the tournament, factors, certain factors broke in our favor. Yeah. And all we needed was a draw in that game against Uruguay to qualify to the next stage. And we failed. And for me, that was a choke job. And I put it down on Otoado. And in this situation, mm -hmm. certain things have broken the way of um, Tottenham Hotspurs, and it was there for the taking, hmm. for them to get that Champions League spot. Yep. At this point in time, it's not all over for them to be able to get it because there is another round of game to be played. Yep. But from the looks of it, it's, like, it's likely Aston Villa will get it. Yep. And looking at how their campaign has gone um, from the start to almost the finish, yep. I think missing out on the Champions League spot and likely to finish in fifth place it has to be a, a choke job, and I, I would describe it as an underwhelming way to end what looked like a very, very promising season. Mm. Despite the fact that going into this season or coming into this season, yeah. there were few expectations for Tottenham Hotspur to excel because Ant Postikoglu was, was a new coach. He is a new coach yeah. coming into the Premier League. Um, there, w there was the hurricane exit, mm -hmm. and so you, 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 you had to wonder how many how many players will be able to step up to make up for all those goals that he took away from the team. And the fact that Richarlison um, had his issues mm -hmm. and yeah. all these challenges no, were goalkeeper. very present. New goalkeeper, Vicario, yeah. uh, Mickey van de Ven, as we just saw. Picked up an injury. Picked up an injury. Came and back. he's also a new guy. Yeah. He, he's a new guy in, in the Premier League. So how were these guys going to settle in the league mm. and perform? So yeah. the expectations were quite low. I'll give them that. The expectations were quite low. But looking at how they started and how they were able to just make a click and work so very well early on, mm -hmm. I expected them to be able to at least get or uh, maintain enough momentum yeah. to finish the season I think James in Madison, the Champions League. I feel like Madison derailed their season. Had he stayed healthier, I feel like that early season on beating run could have gone on a while longer. Mm -hmm. The moment he went out with the injury, their offense just looked stagnant. Day. Well, well they, I'll give you a summary of what James yeah. Madison is all about. Mm -hmm. um, Throughout the entire campaign, yeah. he starts off the campaign as an unplayable talent, mm -hmm. as an unplayable player. Yeah. Then he becomes unavailable. <laughs> then the next thing you know, he's unrecognizable. Yeah. And that's the summary of James Madison. And then he would do some small shenanigans towards the end of the season uh, just to keep you yeah. interested and just to let you feel that. And this was a guy I was really gunning yeah. for. I expected him to really make it into the England national team for the Euros. But at this point in time, no, Copama is taking that spot. Hmm. Well, that's a whole debate on this one. If I'm, if I'm um, Gareth Southgate, listen, I'm taking uh, James Madison. I'm finding a way to sneak him into the team. I know what he can do. I, I know it's competitive, like I'm saying. I'm, I'm not ready to get into the debate of who he replaces and all of that. But I'm saying that he has qualities and he can do things that I feel like the other people in the group cannot yeah, do. Yeah, that's why and I so was gunning for him. It's, but it's, now it's a way to sneak him into the group. To Let me read a few him. messages before we take our first break here. So... Uh, this one here says that Johnny Evans was in the team that beat Arsenal 8-2 in the 2011-2012 season. 
and he was in today's squad. My God, how have we made bad decisions that after all these years, he's still in this squad? He says, Yehoah Zebaoth in coach's voice. <laughs> This one here uh, is from Emmanuel from Lagos State, Nigeria. So my Nigerian people heard me. Uh, it says, amazing evening city sports crew. For Arsenal fans, because of their early uh, syndrome, their early syndrome continues again. Another willing awaits them, Charlie. Mm. Arsenal's um, going through some tough times right now. Let me read more messages. Uh, this one here uh, says, bonsoir to the more. Uh, Edi Ativi from Lome in Togo. Uh, he says, I salute you. Uh, coach is not around today. Um, he, he says that, is it that the, as far as Man United are concerned, is it that the players are not following the coach's instructions or is the problem coming from the coach himself? Uh, Man U um, will not be playing in Europe next season. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Uh, this one is from Dos Santos inside Kentampo. Says, you guys are doing a great job. Um, this one says that... Uh, it's from King Dollar. It says, last week I said City will go top of the league and it has come true and Arsenal will not get a league cup crowd. So Arsenal definitely not getting a league cup. Let's take our first break here on the show. When we come back, there's more Premier League stuff to uh, jump onto. There's also some stuff from other leagues. So stay with us here on Scorecard. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. We are just done one highlight from the Premier League. That was Tottenham and Burnley. Let's get to more highlights. Fulham were expected to do Arsenal a favour at Craven Cottage where Manchester City visited. Well, Manchester City had other ideas of their own. They completely ran route. They made it look easy. In the end, it was 4-0 to the citizens. In the end, it was light work. For Manchester City, the hate watch was it was over before it really started. Anyway, um, it looks like Manchester City will walk away with this. Look, um, they are trying to get the job done as early as possible, even in the games that they play. So, mm. ten to fifteen minutes, yeah. if they don't score, they are very disappointed, and that's what they try to do every single game. So, this game was no different. The way they play, the way they move the yeah. ball around the pitch to catch Fulham out was a thing of beauty. Hmm. And one thing that will trouble Arsenal is the fact that... It's not just the fact that City are winning their games. Mm -hmm. It's how they are managing to win their games. Yeah, they literally eroded their, their goal difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly, no, just that's goals. what I was going to talk about. They, they are beating them into submission, as they did to Fulham in this game. And the fact is that they are getting a lot of yeah. uh, goals, a lot of assists, a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, uh, brilliant, play. brilliant play from different Unlikely sides sources. of the pitch. Gvardiol is delivering, yeah. Kevin De Bruyne is delivering, Haaland has his moments, yep. Bernardo Silva folding. It's not just one or two players. Yeah. So uh, earlier in the season, we were wondering when uh, Gundogan left, who is going to be their main man? If it's not Rodri, who is going to step mm -hmm. up? We've seen so many players step up. And as you said, they've eaten into Arsenal's goal difference. Now it's after this game, it was yeah. three. It's yeah. three now. It's three now, yeah. It was plus two. Arsenal, was, yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal won. Arsenal won. United, yeah. Yeah. It's plus three now. So, even if they draw against yeah. uh, Spurs, right. going into the last game of the season, they will just definitely fancy themselves to get a lot of goals against uh, an on-vacation West Ham team. <laughs> so, yeah, the season is definitely shaping up to be, to turn into a really good title race at the end of the season. But... It's a very good performance, again, from Manchester yeah. City. And the players are really stepping up when it matters. Players stepping up, indeed. I've had some really funny stories out of England and some friends from London. Um, a friend told me that, look, Tottenham Hotspur are absolutely looking to get beaten by Manchester City and that they are in no mood to do Arsenal any favours. They're not going to watch Arsenal parade a Premier League trophy in London. It's not happening. As far as they are concerned, they say that they are losing that match to Manchester. It'll, I find I find that hilarious. No, it will be yeah. the most Tottenham thing if they actually manage to beat Man City and hand no, Arsenal for, the for, for real, for real. And I, I don't know, but yeah, do they have enough motivation to go out and win that game? I don't think so. Um, and I, like I said earlier, when we talking about Spurs, that they had their moments where things broke for them, mm -hmm. where, where they um, not partic they not competing in, in the in the European scene, yeah. um, having a deep run, and 
looking at where Aston Villa made their campaign to in the Conference League, mm -hmm. they were a bit distracted and they lost a lot of games in a couple of games in there. And it was there for the taking to make it to the Champions League spot sure. and have it all wrapped up. And they dropped it. And I don't think the motivation will be there because they know that, yeah, at this point in time, we had our chances, we let it slip. And we just, realistically, you just don't see Aston Villa slipping mm. up again yep. to avoid or uh, missing out on that Champions League sport. And knowing very well that they are coming up against a very motivated Manchester City team. Mm. I don't think that, that they will overly extend themselves to potentially um, cause Man City to miss out on winning the, the title and hand, pretty much hand the title to their very mm. much hated rivals in, in Arsenal. Knowing very well that they have players in that team who are also in the in the running to be named in the squad in their national team squad yep. for for the Euros. I don't think they they will overly commit themselves. Yeah, they'll be professional and know they will compete. But yeah. I, I honestly don't see them as overly extending themselves to mm. ensure that yes, they beat Manchester City. So yeah, those conspiracy theories. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, or element of truth in there. And mm. honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Man City just walk in there, get a two zero <clears> win, <throat> and just wrap things up. I Spurs. Behave yourself. I think they, they picked that point in the first leg, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, they picked that point in the first leg. You've shown that you are capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Manchester City team. I don't know, man, but I, I don't want Manchester City to win a fourth title. They like, will win it. The ah, only man. thing which would have kept City from doing it is individualism, where players are seeking personal goals. Yeah. But we saw that Vardio was in a hat-trick. Yeah, he gave the penalty to it's like everybody. Yeah. Went, everyone everybody wants. woke up like towards the business end of the season, and like it's like they were like, yeah, and yeah. it happens every year. Like one in player three, steps up. Yeah, back in the day, um, you have Kevin De Bruyne mm -hmm. return from injury, he yeah. will step up. Yeah. Then for the past two seasons, it was um, Gundogan. Gundogan and Ellen Haaland stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. This season is is Vadio. Yeah. I mean, look at that finish. I, that's a very composed finish. I was finish. like moving crazy. I was, I was watching him on <laughs> and the... And he spoke with his, weak, with his right foot. Twice now. Twice. I, I was watching him on the flank and I was like, whoa. Because I said, I remember I said that Vario was the best young defender in the world yeah. at the time Manchester City were buying him. But and he kind first, of underwhelmed you. Yeah, in, I think you heard your message. In the first couple of weeks, I was like... Mm. I, I don't think you are playing like a 75 yeah. million pound defender. Well, Pep says they've signed the best winger in the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it might as well be because the kind of stuff he's doing right now, really crazy. Manchester City um, just putting out a marker, putting the fear of God in Arsenal, really. Uh, let's get to more highlights. Let's get to the City ground. It was Nottingham Forest up against Chelsea Football Club. Nottingham Forest went into the game week um, expecting to be in some form of relegation battle. But the adversaries below them made sure that it was over before it really started. The game itself turned out to be a mere formality for them. Chelsea, though, are still chasing a ticket to Europe. Even Nicholas Jackson was decisive on the day. Um, just putting that near post header in. Edward, quick thoughts on that game. Forrest surviving um, despite a really shaky past couple of weeks. Chelsea chasing that European ticket. Look, um, against... Everton and against West Ham, we saw Chelsea at their dominating best. Hmm. Against Spurs, we saw them at their efficient best. I think in this game, we saw them mentally wise at their best again. This is Chelsea. Uh, this Chelsea team probably a few months ago would not have won this game. Hmm. They would have ended up losing it because they didn't have the mentality for it. Yeah. And that's what positive <laughs> results do. Once you start winning, once you yeah. start playing yeah. well, you're Players believe that there's every opportunity for them to win mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. game. And even when they go down late in their game, yeah. they know they can come back. And we've seen that from Chelsea. Starting to score a lot of goals, mm -hmm. players starting to play well, everybody starting to believe, even in the manager himself. So a couple of changes. Chelsea yeah. are 2-1 down. They go from 2-1 to 3-2 uh, up. And we see what a good bench does. There is the, you can't blame all Chelsea's results on players not being available. Mm. But we can see what them being available can do to the team. You have players off the bench who can yeah. make a difference even when the talent on the pitch is not performing. So Pochettino earlier in the season couldn't mm -hmm. have brought on Sterling, Nkunku, Rhys James. He would have been bringing on Gilchrist, David Washington, Cesare Cassidy. Oh, That's the man. difference. And that, that's, like, that's like day and night. Day and night. 
day and night. So you, you have to understand the manager. You have yeah. to understand the team when things aren't going well because there's not enough personnel to get things done. For Nottingham Forest, good for them to stay up in the Premier League. But they were helped by the fact that we've got three of the worst promoted teams ever in the Premier League. Yeah. Actually, it's a fact. They are the three worst promoted teams in the Premier League. Only manage 66 points. Some, some, one of the teams is pushing 100 goals conceded. Sheffield, Sheffield, United, Sheffield United, they conceded crazy. over 100 over goals. 100. <laughs> over 100, over 100 like, goals. How do you do yeah, that? 101 so, at this point in time. Yeah, Nottingham Forest should how do you count explain themselves that to your lucky. Fans? They ah. need to count themselves very lucky because yeah. they were helped by the fact that we've got Burnley, Sheffield yeah. United and Luton who have been really terrible throughout the season. So good for them that they stayed up, but Just, they need to... Mm. perform better yeah, next season. Just, just to, to stay on you with the Forest bit, is Espirito Santo the guy mm -hmm. to move forward with Forest? Because they've, they had some stability with Steve Cooper. Mm -hmm. I think he was unfairly treated. If I had my own way, he'd probably still be their head coach right now. But yeah. is Nuno the guy to take them forward now that they've managed to retain their status? Yeah, I think so. I, I think this is the kind of team for him. Um, he, more like the, he can shape uh, this team more like the way he shaped the Wolverhampton Wanderers team hmm. um, that he coached a couple of, of seasons back. Um, he moved over to Tottenham Hotspur. The first two months were very good for him. Yeah. But the style wasn't something that the fans were too comfortable with. Um, stay compact, stay mm -hmm. um, very deep and hit out on the counter-attacks, just like Jose Mourinho, a fellow Portuguese manager, did uh, at Tottenham Hotspur. They weren't too comfortable with it. And unfortunately, he, he, um, he, felt, he felt the pressure and he decided to change things. He decided to change things. Then they started conceding mm -hmm. goals. They started losing games. And the next thing you know, uh, a manager who had, been, who had won the manager of the month in the first two months yeah. of, his, of his tenure as Spurs, all of a sudden was kicked out of his job. And so for, for, for him, I think with Nottingham Forest, where they are at this mm -hmm. point in time, all that they, they do care about is yeah. the win. They don't really care about the style too much. And this is the kind of team for him. So I see him being the guy um, to take Nottingham Forest um, forward in the near future. So for me, yeah, I think they should uh, allow him to stay and for him to be able to con consistently utilize that counter-attacking style. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they have the weapons to, to do so. Um, Hudson Odoi, um, Langa. Gip, uh, Gips White, yeah, Ilanga. Yeah. Those are the guys you, 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 you would entrust to hit out on the counter-attack and have guys like Awoni and uh, Chris, uh, Chris Wood to be able to Funny finish thing about them Chris Wood. If Nottingham Forest had not stayed up, they would have lashed Bruh. him. The fans would have lashed him. Yeah, because the chances yeah, chance, chance, yeah, all season. The chance, yeah. Like, you know what I say all the time? Like, those are some of the chances that I see and I'm like, yo, our players might not be doing great down here, but a lot of our players are scoring these chances. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, Chris Wood, does, I mean, he's been around for quite a while. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. let's just say we'll cut him some slack for uh, those misses. Let's talk about Manchester United now. Now, they were involved in the game of the round at Old Trafford. They were up against Arsenal. Arsenal still uh, do not have their destiny in their own hands. They are hoping that Manchester City will slip up some way, somehow. They went all the way to Old Trafford. It was a lone goal victory, but most importantly, they kept a clean sheet. So that Leandro Trossard goal enough uh, to keep Arsenal's title hopes alive, despite how slender uh, they are. Um, what do you make of that performance? Gutsy, I would say. <laughs> it was efficient from Arsenal. Hmm. They did what they needed to do. We've been talking about how they needed to keep Man City perfect. City had won uh, earlier in the weekend, and yeah. it was strange for Arsenal because usually they are the ones who play ahead of City, go further up, mm -hmm. and then City catch up. But this time, City had already played. They were top of the yeah. league. They needed points, three points from this game. Otherwise, City could have won the league against Spurs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in midweek. So it wasn't the best performance from Arsenal we've seen all season. Yeah. Actually, at points, you could feel the nervousness through the squad because they felt United could get a goal. And if United did get, get a goal, it probably ruins their title race. But they did enough. They were efficient enough. They got mm. the goal they needed to. And a couple more opportunities after that. But most importantly, they defended well. And I think that was what set them apart yeah. in this game. Their defense, Saliba, Gabriel Makayesh, Ben White to a lesser extent, mm. but also importantly, Tomiyasu. It was Arsenal's left back, left back position that's cost them 
a lot this season. So for him to step in and step up against first Ahmad Diallo yeah. and also against uh, Anthony and also against Dallo, who is a very offensive player and had, has his moments on that side. Mm -hmm. And to be really strong, I think that's what's really helped uh, Arsenal in this game. So they've thrown the mantle back to Man City mm. against Spurs. And it's ironic to see Arsenal hoping for a Spurs win to keep <laughs> their title hopes oh, man. alive. But Imagine Ascai needing Abbas, a favour from your enemy. Asuka yeah. said yeah. after the game, they'll be as, uh, yeah, fans, be a, a Spurs, a Spurs fan, <laughs> fan uh, in midweek. So that's, that's just interesting. That's good for Arsenal. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, anyone who ever doubted um, that Ten Hag can really coach was put to shame in this game. Mm. Because the way he set this team up, it was just on point. The way they played, it was on point. Wait, it wait, was just wait, you're confusing me right now. So are you Ten Hag in? Oh, I'm Ten Hag in. I'm, at, I'm Ten Hag in. Because at the end of the day, it was okay. clear. I just, I just, needed, to, I just yeah. needed to figure that out. Yeah, because out. at the end of the day... It was clear, and it has been clear for a while now that it is the players who are more or less failing to get the manager's game plan mm -hmm. um, to be executed very well. Yeah. How many times have we seen Man United fail to close down um, an attacker who is about to mm -hmm. shoot? We saw that in this. In, we saw that in the clip uh, when Declan Rice was about to shoot. No one was closing him down. How many times <coughs> have we seen Man United players fail to set up a simple offside trap? The goal that Leandro Trossard scored, mm -hmm. simple ball that uh, fell to Kai Havertz. Yep. It was down to Casemiro playing him on by a wide margin. Then he gets the ball. He moves the ball close to the Man United box. And Johnny Evans does the right thing by forcing him to go to his right foot, which is his weaker foot. Mm -hmm. But look at the distance between Johnny Evans and Kai Havertz. Yeah. It was way too much. And it gave him the time to really set his body up yep, very well. Simple cutback. And deliver a cutback. Then, that's not even the worst part of it. One Bissaka, he's just looking at the ball, and Leandro Trossard runs from behind, and he's able to tuck the ball into the net ahead of, ahead of a slide tackle. Very, very poor um, defensive organization. Mm -hmm. That is not on the coach. That is definitely on the players. Then you also have this funny situation that happened in the game where 85% of my United's attack was down the, the, the left side, mm. where Ganacho was as inefficient as you would ever, ever see. But Amad Diallo, who was on the other side and delivered an efficient performance, he wasn't getting a lot of the balls, which was very strange to me. Yeah. Because this guy was wasting all the chances. Ganacho was wasting all the chances. My United had very, very good chances in that game. Unfortunately, the clip didn't do justice to uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. way Man United played in this game. <laughs> it didn't do justice at all. But at the end of the day, yeah. it, if you wanted to see Ten Hag really coach, yes, you had to see this game. You had to watch it live and you walk out of the, out, out from that game mm -hmm. knowing very well that Man United have a very good manager. You, no one can convince me that as a, at the end of last season, the, the verdict on him was a resounding yes, we have our manager. Then mm. in the space of six months, all of a sudden, he's so bad that everyone wants him gone. No, no one can convince me that this guy all of a sudden can't coach. What he did this afternoon shows that he can coach because on the <laughs> bench... shaking his head. He was on the bench. <laughs> he was on the bench. All they had was Anthony oh, and Christian Eriksen and a bunch of kindergarten kids. There was nothing for him to work with. And he, he was able to deliver yeah. a very, very good performance mm. against potentially the league champion. I mean, I say this, right? If you've gone through the sequence where you've gotten hammered by Crystal Palace the way you've done, um, I think they lost the week after as well. They've just been all over the place. So if you have any pride mm -hmm. left in you as a person, you're going to go out there and salvage some pride. I, I, I don't know how much of that... I mean, you yourself were complaining about how Ten Hag left Ganato in this game. But again, you say he coached a good game. So um, I, I, I want to believe for you that's maybe like a 7 over 10 or 8 over 10 type of performance because yeah. it wasn't flawless. But yeah, Ganacho, he, ha he mm -hmm. didn't have too many options. Be like I said, he had yeah. just Anthony yeah. and Christian Eriksen. And unfortunately, I was vouching for him to take off Ganacho and mm -hmm. replace him with Anthony. But Amad Diallo also got injured. And Fair. that forced Fair. him to replace Amad Diallo with Anthony. Hmm. I, just, I just wonder what will change at United come 
next season because they have a new sporting director in place. Yeah. They are sort of reconstructing their they, they need to back, sign defenders. Their backroom stuff. I, I hope they don't take any more suggestions from Eric Ten Hag because clearly uh, he's out of his depth as far as that's concerned. Look, uh, one of the texters said was speaking about Evans being there from 2012 yeah, all the yeah. way to now. Luka Modric has been at Real Madrid from 2012 all the way to now. Yeah. It's not about the how long the player has been nope, there. No, it's about the But the, if the, they become your primary person in that role, that's when it becomes a problem. Modric is not the primary midfielder at Real at Madrid. Real Madrid. Now. Yeah. Even if there are a couple of injuries to Real Madrid players, he's still not going to be a primary because Kamavinga, Chouameni, Valverde, Cruz, even Bellingham, yeah, even Cruz, Cruz, yeah, there are so many players who could fit in. And that is what sets a yeah. Madrid situation. But Man United are making... A, they're giving John Evans starter minutes, like major minutes, minutes as a starter. That's, That's kind of crazy. And, and, and just a quick one. Uh, lots of people are gunning for Man United to go out and splash money on mm -hmm. attacking players, you know, creative midfielders, a strike, another striker to, yeah. to compete with uh, Rasmus Hoyland. That's all well and good. But they should look at how Man City and Arsenal have built their, their teams over the years. Mm -hmm. By proper defenders. Defensive solidity. Defensive solidity. Arsenal have gone... Throughout this campaign, without pretty, with, without pretty much a, a recognizable striker, mm. and yet they have 27 league wins, 27 league wins. That's more than mm. the Invincibles recorded during yeah. their era. That Invincibles trophy had like two billion draws. We'll talk <laughs> about it on another day. But let's take our second uh, break here on the show. When we come back, we have some action from the Spanish La Liga. We we'll also bring you some action from the Bundesliga. If we have time, we we'll touch on some NBA playoffs before we run out. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let me read a couple of your messages that have been coming through before we get into uh, the final part of the show. This one here is from Kweku from La Paz. He says, not so fast Manchester City supporters. There will be a hum done to Manchester City on Tuesday. Uh, this one here uh, says, good evening, Ben and your crew. I don't know why coach is not here today. Anyways, congratulations to my darling club, Arsenal. We are uh, now at the mercy of Tottenham and West Ham. Uh, now it's well. Dominic Baron watching from Abuja, Nigeria. So Dominic coming through from Abuja. Uh, Gausu from Alajo says that uh, good evening City sports crew. Uh, you guys are doing fantastic, especially in the Premier League. Arsenal um, have, did, have done really well. Sorry about that. Uh, this one's from Bebatov. Wow. <laughs> Bebatov says that uh, if Tottenham win against City on Tuesday, um, I will... Rename my girlfriend from Sidat to Spurs. Hey, Charlie, boys for cool down. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I think, let, me, let me just get this again. He says, if Tottenham win against Manchester City on Tuesday, I will rename or I'll give my girlfriend the nickname, or I'll change my girlfriend's nickname from Sidat to Spurs, and I'll follow up to marry her the next season. Hey. <laughs> Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Skinunu from Dwayan Quanta says that Chelsea FC uh, will be a difficult team to beat next season if Nicolas Jackson is replaced with a clinical player or better still, improves as a player. Batman from Asaman Kessie says, Hey, Man United cry, what have we done to them? Please, beg them to win for us. Why? In the name of... Of God. This one here says that it's from Starboy uh, from La Paz, I believe. Uh, it says, Ben, why are you wearing a Leverkusen jersey? Have you moved from being a Liverpool fan to Leverkusen like Coach did? Well, let's just say that, like I said, this was given to me by <laughs> Timothy Fosumensa, and he's part of the winning squad. So I'm in solidarity with my brother who was one. Uh, like I said, some people are. Um, <laughs> in projects, some people believe in chariots, some people believe in <laughs> whatever it is. We are here, uh, we believe in unbeaten seasons, and so that's what I'm doing, repping by Leverkusen. Um, let me get a few more messages out of the way, and then we'll get to some of the action. Uh, this one says, I want in Swachaman to win the FA Cup because they have the financial muzzle for Africa. Uh, Chelsea all the way to Europe, Kofi Ponsa from Kumase with that one. So that's it for uh, the message slate. Let's get into uh, some more highlights. Let's get to the Italian Serie A, uh, where Inter Milan have already won the league. They were up against Frosinone this weekend. It was um, a really walk in the park. Big one for them. 5-0 they won. So Inter Milan still finding motivation to win games, even after they've wrapped up 
the title. I mean, Edwin, if you are in Milan, what are you doing at this point? Are you trying out new schemes for next season? What are you doing? No, you are adding to that lead because you've been disrespected for far too long. Napoli have come along, AC mm, Milan have mm. come along. Everyone has disrespected you. So it's important for them to win the league at Put the counter. exclamation on it. Exactly. Put the exclamation point. Show everyone you are outright yeah. the best team in Italy. And they've done it throughout the season. Yep. They were even able to win this game convincingly with Lautaro Martinez off the bench. And he's been probably the best forward in the, in the Serie A this uh -huh. season. Uh -huh. So it was important for them to get this win and show everyone that even though uh, the league is done, even though there seems to be no motivation, yeah. they can still turn up the style. And they were able to give a few players some minutes, get them scoring, get them into yeah. good form. We saw Arnautovic get onto the score sheet. He is playing for a future uh, Inter Milan, so it was good I'm to see. I'm surprised Anatovic is still playing at the top yeah. level, like yeah. at the team like Inter Milan by this time. That shows exactly my point. Going back to my United, even if you are an old player, experienced, a yeah. veteran, in the right team, in the right circumstances, with the right structure sure. around sure. you, you can still deliver. Hmm. I, I just for Inter, I just love the fact that um, they they get value for money, and I think it, it even goes beyond Inter. I think it's an Italian thing. Uh, with the league because they they um they because of the money. Issue, because of the financial yeah, issues yeah. they had to really really dig they deep really into scouting. into scouting mm -hmm. I, I don't know so much about analytics but i think with their scouting they've got it down to a yeah. t and they they know how to approach players and sign players on a free so for instance you look at uh, someone like Marcos Turam. He came mm -hmm. on a free transfer AC Milan have been do making a killing out of those free and transfers and loan deals too yep. Yep. And, and on top of that, you look at AS Roma. If an Indica was available... and them out for free. It came for free. And I was surprised teams, teams didn't approach and get, and get him signed. They are not scouting. And, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's back to scouting. And for the Italian league, I think, let's say to Eric Ten Hag. My United does the unthinkable, in my view, and they suck Eric <laughs> Ten Hag. I think the Italian league represents the league that has two of the best um, replacements for him. Mm. One, Simone Inzaghi, and two, Thiago Mota with Bologna. I mean, if you've been able to get Bologna to qualify to the Champions League, yep. then you must be really doing something good. And mm -hmm. yeah, he is a possible um, candidate to replace um, Eric Ten Hag, in my view. That is if uh, my United let Eric Ten Hag go. Hmm. Let's get to another game. Really, Napoli have had a torrid season from winning the title to basically looking unrecognizable. Uh, let's get to that one. It was against Bologna, and Yao was just talking about them. Thiago Motas Bologna. Once upon a time, played for Barcelona, played for Inter Milan. These days, uh, he's doing really big things as far as the coaching world is concerned. He's qualified his team to uh, the Champions League. So those are the uh, main actors in the Bologna movie. So you have Thiago Motta, the head coach. You have a guy like Ossolini, the left-footed guy. Uh, Ferguson. Um, you have um, Odgaard. Salamakis. Um, he from he was on loan from AC Milan. Yeah, Milan. yeah, so very good. Zexy. Zexy, who, Dutch he international. Came, he came through from Bayern Munich too. Yeah, big, big uh, guy. He's, what, six foot five? I think a lot yeah. of teams are after him. Dutch international. Yeah. He's cooled off a little towards the end of the campaign, but he was really instrumental for them. Just quick thoughts on Bologna. Quickly, for Bologna, it's not about the goals they've scored. They've actually scored 51, mm. which is fewer than Roma, fewer than Atalanta, fewer than even Napoli. Mm. It's the goals they've not conceded. And I think so far this season, they've conceded 27. Ooh. That's second only to Inter Milan, who are the champions. So they've been really Defensive solidity. astute defensively. And that's what's carried them uh, to where they are this season. They've been fantastic. Hmm. Yeah, quick thoughts on Napoli. Yeah. I think this is their third coach of the season. Yeah. They started out with Rudy Garcia, went, went to, to Walter Mazzari. Mazzari. I don't know what they were thinking, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what they were thinking. I mean, once Espaletti mm -hmm. walked out of the door, yeah, it was always going to be a problematic um, situation for them to replace such a... Um, a guy who was so tactically uh, astute, uh, but yet underrated because of his, his time with AS Roma. He mm -hmm. didn't really um, get them to win a championship. Had a falling out with um, Francesco Totti, who is a god um, at AS Roma. You, you, don't, you dare not go against uh, Francesco Totti. He did, and that's the reason why he had to go. Um, he did some very good work when he moved over to um, Russia. And they went to Zenit 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 Petersburg. Petersburg. Yes, and so it was always going to be problematic. And Rudy Garcia, yeah, it was an odd pick because 
he, he has had his falling out with a lot of um, teams and players. And so it was always going to be a very difficult task for him to come in um, after a historic season and be able to replicate that kind of form. I think they needed someone who, who had a bit of an elderly um, touch, um, someone like uh, maybe a Rafa Benitez um, to come in there and, and get the job done. Uh, because at the end of the day, he had, he had coached the team before. Yep. And so <laughs> I think that they needed someone like that. But once they got that Rudy Garcia pick wrong, I think it just set them, set them up for failure this season. They had to get the coach right. Mm. But once they didn't get it right, yeah, it set them up for failure. My United have been dealing with this yeah. since... Um, Alex Ferguson walked out of the window, out of the door. Mm. Once they didn't get his direct replacement right, yeah, it set them up. It's his fault. He chose his direct replacement. He's yeah. he's to blame for all the things United but that they, they could have. They could have pushed back a little bit. Well, he's like you said. Somebody is a god. Ferguson exactly. is a god at Manchester. <laughs> Manchester. Then, they, 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 they you need to support him with 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 right players. I mean, the only player he got in his place. They, they hired my good friend. Was Fellaini. They hired my good friend. They hired my good friend David Moyes and then left him out in the cold. Let me just throw this question yeah. to both of you. So now Napoli are the crossroads because they've not been able to uphold the standards of last season. Yeah. No Champions League football for them. What do they do with their two budding stars? Do they? Do they, sell, sell. do they break it up sell, and, sell. And, and sell? Look, um, the news is that Napoli expects Osimhen to leave. So he's not staying, mm. no matter what. The, the re release clause is 120 million euros. Is Chelsea I think, paying it? Yeah, Chelsea can pay this money and get him into their mm. squad. For Kvaraskelia, they want to keep him. Because they recognize that he is a star. Mm -hmm. And he can fetch them a lot more money in a couple of years. Huh. So they want to offer him a new deal and try and get a release clause into the contract for the next maybe couple of years. Huh. They want to build the next two years around him. Whether it will turn out well, it depends on who else they bring in to, yeah. to com uh, complement him. Because he didn't do the job alone. He mm -hmm. needed someone up front True. to finish majority of the I was just saying chances. that he, he, it, because, because of Simon has not, also not scored a lot this season, mm -hmm. it looks like he's had an underwhelming campaign. Everybody's like, where's the Quaraskelia that was there yeah. last season? But I'm guessing you need the striker to put yeah. the chances away for you to sell, also sell get... Now. Because you, I, I think, this, is, I yeah, think, this, I this so. is the time that their value is it's, at an all-time high. Yep. You won't yep. get this kind of value for them If they anymore. have another mm -hmm. underwhelming season, yes. Quaraskelia's value will take we'll, a hit we'll again. Yeah. So, yeah, so sell if, them if, now. If, if, I'm, if I'm Aurelio De Laurentiis, I'm definitely selling uh, this summer. Let's get to uh, the Bundesliga. Now, let's do back-to-back -back highlights. Bayern Munich were up against... Uh, Wolfsburg. They won that game by two goals to nil. And then uh, the champions, Leverkusen, like I said, they are aiming for an unbeaten campaign. They have one more game to go in the Bundesliga to make it happen. Let's see if they can. But in this particular weekend's uh, game, they completely run routes over their opening. So right now, um, Bayer Leverkusen have completed their um, quest. They are just doing side missions, you know, completing a lot of side missions as the season goes along. Unbeaten still on the cards. Yeah, last week we were talking about them having five games to go until they finish their season unbeaten. Mm -hmm. And in midweek they produced classic by Leverkusen with a 97th minute. I'm sure the fans, the fans themselves are tired from like the <laughs> adrenaline. We are all tired. <laughs> we are all tired. Because when it gets to that period, you sense that they are going to get We to need goal. to see the, the Super Cup they need to win the Europa League so we can see a super cup between themselves and Real Madrid if Real Madrid win. An unstoppable yeah. force yeah. meets an immovable object. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's literally the best description for it, really. I mean, yeah, I'll just snap yeah. us on that. Oh, yeah, for Bayer Leverkusen, um, they, they were into something the moment they signed Nathan Teller for like 20 million euros. Mm -hmm. uh, from Southampton. At the time, Southampton got relegated from the English Premier League. And... I ask myself, why would um, a team like Bayer Leverkusen that doesn't have too much money, money fly that... 20 million on yeah. Nathan Teller? It, he was good, but he wasn't that um, extraordinary or mm -hmm. exceptional. And that told me that Xabi Alonso definitely knows what he was, he was doing, he was doing and yeah. what he was planning um, to get out of this team. And to be able to do it with multiple players, um, have Patrick Sheik come in and produce the time Victor Boniface got injured. Have the, uh, the African brothers, um, Amin Adli of Morocco, um, Edmond Tapsoba, all these guys come in and also deliver it, on points. It, was, it mm. was just an all-round team kind of performance. Yeah. And 
yeah, this team is a very cohesive unit. I want, and that's the yeah. biggest um, asset that they have. Good point. I, I really want to know what they do with picking the player of the season because that would be, that would be quite the task. Jeremy Frimpong has a claim. Um, Alex Grimaldo has a claim. I Florian, think Granit Xhaka has Florian a bit. Florian, Florian, oh my goodness. Um, Robert Andrich. Florian um, Vets has had Florian. an absolute storm of a season. Wonderful like season. For, for those who don't know what he... He's in double figures in goals and assists. Same yeah. for Grimaldo, same for uh, Frimpong. So it's been that kind of season for them. Zabi Alonso, the MVP, but hey, in the end, the players have done a lot of... Of good work as well. Let's finish off by talking about some basketball just off the grid uh, before we go. We just have a couple of minutes to go. Um, let me take the gentleman's thoughts on um, who, who, who runs out with this series because I'm sure next time we meet the Timberwolves and Nuggets series will be done. There's game four tonight. Um, who do you have for that one? Yeah? Um, I think I'll go with the Denver Nuggets. Even I, the series? Yeah, oh, I think boy. I'll go with the Denver Nuggets because I've yeah. seen this on a couple of occasions. I think back-to-back -back post seasons where yeah. Anthony Edwards, sometimes he gets into his head and he does, um, he, he makes the wrong decision. Um, last season, in that crucial playoff um, series, he went in for a steal when there was no need for him to go in for a steal. And there was a game-winning shot um, against Minnesota. And that was, the, that was it for Minnesota. Uh, in another instance, um, he went to play the help defense when there was no need to play help defense. <laughs> and he left his man open and the, his man buried the, the, the jump shot, and it was curtains for Minnesota. At this point in time, yes, game three, he came out flat, and he also did, he showed those kind of um, tendencies, those kind of, of same traits, mm -hmm. and they ended up losing that particular game. If he doesn't check that overly um, enthusiastic bit about himself, hmm. where he's, he wants to overly do things, and doesn't just um, stay play within the stay the within of the, the structure of the game, stay within the game plan, stay within the flow of the game, and try to do a little bit too much. That's when it will end up costing his team, um, and and end up giving the the Denver Nuggets just that needed juice that they they need to be able to finish off the series. So yeah, I, I think Anthony Edwards is just not there yet. He's an exciting prospect. If he can get this done, hmm. yes, then. Definitely, he is the next face of the NBA. And I definitely see them um, going to the NBA finals with the Boston Celtics. But um, if they can't get it done, then it's, it's the Denver Nuggets uh, again. So, yeah, there's a bit of a caveat there, but I'm, mm. leaning, I'm leaning towards the Denver Nuggets. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go against Joke, the Joker. I mean, he's been fantastic. Did you have the same stance before the last game? I mean, were you one of those people who were thinking the Nuggets are in trouble? Yes, after game two, yes. Absolutely, yes. After game two, yes. Yeah, there was a feeling that, you no, know, this might be where game they, two was a they fall down. flat. But then the Nuggets thrive off momentum. Yeah. And once they get that first victory, it's just about carrying it over to the next game. And I feel Joker has so, yeah. so much support across, across Jamal the Jamal Murray looks Jamal... healthy again. He, exactly. He, he had a really heavily plastered um, calf in the game one and two. I think it, yeah. in game three, he was... Moving a lot more a like lot, himself. A lot better. And yeah. when Jamal Murray plays well, I think the Denver Nuggets play yeah. well. And I feel that there's too much in favor of the Denver Nuggets. Yao has enumerated what uh, Anthony Edwards usually does. I don't think Kat has really stepped up. It, yes, he's yeah. not really stepped up in this series. And he's been leading, so he's been happy to be back yeah. with Robin, like just playing the, the backup guy. But I, I, he's been decent. Yeah. He's not been extraordinary. He's not been extraordinary. Yeah. But I feel the winner of the, the, the NBA series. title is going to come from the West. Mm. The West is so much stronger than the East True. at the moment. True. Fine. Boston Celtics are way above every single other team yeah. in the East. And they almost certainly will get to the finals. Yep. But you look at the options we have in the West, uh, Dallas Mavericks, OKC. the OKC, and the Denver Nuggets. And, yeah, the Timberwolves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was crazy, in the East, right, I feel like if the Knicks had a fully healthy roster, the Celtics would be in trouble. Because the Knicks, the Knicks are not star-studded, mm -hmm. but they have a lot of dogs on their team. They, they play so tough, they basically knock you off your rhythm. But and they don't have size. They don't have size. That's, that's why I think But the Celtics have lost them, significant no. size in Porzingis as well. Yes, yeah. they have. But they have more size than Knicks. Than the Knicks. And I, honestly, that's why mm. I believe that um, in the, after this season, yeah. they should make a run for a guy like Carl Anthony Towns. They mm. should. Because 
Yeah, New York Knicks, yes. Because he fits um, in, 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 in that space where they really but need Towns, help. Towns has only been playing defense this series. And you know how Tips is. Tips is a defense <laughs> first guy. Yeah, if you're but, going to come in and come and play only offense, you'll probably be on the bench. But they, he's, he's worked with um, Carl T Anthony Towns before, during mm -hmm. his time with the, as the head coach of the Minnesota team, but was when yeah. Jimmy Butler true, was around. True, true, and so he has true. a kind of a, a relationship. Feel, yeah, a relationship with, with Carl Anthony Towns. And he gives them what they really, really need, which is yeah. um, a scoring big man. At this point in time, that is what the New York Knicks need. Mm. They don't need Julius Randle, who is six foot seven, pounding would, the ball. I would have traded Julius Randle <laughs> light years ago. I'm not even sure. Yeah, still doing pounding that the ball stuff. inside the paint for what? God knows, ten seconds, eight seconds. They, that's what they need. They need a mm. kick out option. Who is a big man? Yeah, and Carl Anthony Towns fits that model because at the end of the day, they will play defense with um, Dante Divincenzo and oh, Josh Hart. He's... All of these guys will play defense. So yeah, yeah Carl Anthony Towns mm. will put in a good shape. Then he'll give you that scoring um, output that you really need to be able to kick it to the next level. Because mm. there's a ceiling with this next team. Yeah, true. true. But Josh Hart has been brilliant. Oh, yeah, he has been brilliant. Yeah. Don't say Di Vincenzo. <laughs> He's been cooking. Somebody says Di Vincenzo is the Italian for Steph Curry. It might as well be true <laughs> at this point. Thank you very much, Edwin Kwakofi. Thank you very much, RJ Mr. Thanks uh, to all of you who tuned in to watch the show. Those of you who sent us messages as well, we say a big thank you. Camera, lights, directors, everybody, our producers. Big, big thank you for making this show happen. Same time next week's scorecard. We're back on your screens.